guys, today we're gonna go see if we can find some really cool shoes at Goodwill because I feel like I always find good shoes at this particular Goodwill and I'm just like, like I'm just optimistic today that the shelves are gonna be packed. The, the shelves were not packed. This video definitely took a different turn. Um, I have to talk to you guys about what happens when you walk into the thrift store and things aren't as you planned. Like what happens when you're so optimistic when you walked in, you know, things are gonna be awesome today and then you get in there and it looks like they haven't stocked the shelves in weeks or months or ever. Um, that's what we're going to talk about today because we need to turn those thrifting frowns upside down. You just wait to see the stuff that I found. Okay, so I walk in and I already told you guys I'm looking for shoes, right? But are you seeing what I'm seeing? Like these shelves are all but completely bare. I mean, look at this. I seriously think there might have been like five pair of shoes, but these definitely caught my eye. Like these are called Z Coil. They're $4. It seems like I should buy them. And hello, Bolo. I just talked about these. I just sold three of these. They were larger, but this is definitely going home with me. I don't think that thing even had a price tag. Checking through the wicker baskets here, seeing if there's anything else fall related. But I mean, can you just truly appreciate how bare these shelves are? The seashell thing was kind of cool. Had it been larger, I probably would have picked it up. But I think they wanted like $2 for it. And I kind of considered it for my patio. And then I ended up putting that back. But look at this. There's more white space than there are actual items here. Um, this kitchen aisle is more of the same. I did want to take the time to point out these Melmac dishes. Melmac, Texas Ware, Melamine, always worth picking up. And here's where things get interesting next. Um, I'm looking around here and I found this pot and... Oh. The wooden glass. I should keep that in the video, I think. was so embarrassing you guys like oh my gosh at this point I'm just mortified and start checking the bottoms of everything just to ensure that I'm not leaving anything behind and what in the world this is my first time ever finding it this is Magnolite holy cow major score if you're not aware of Magnolite write that brand down but look at this aisle just look how bare it is I want to show you how bare this aisle is before I find things in this aisle because I am bound to determine I will find things in this aisle so let's see exactly what we can find Bingo, I found these for $2 and they sell for about 20 and I found this ink for $1 sells between 25 and $30. These are super scores and they're going in my cart. I found these Guitar Hero games, but they were only worth about $10 and they wanted to. It didn't seem advantageous for my business model, so I put those back. Um, looking through the games here, and this Rubik's Race catches my eye, but not so much for resale, more of a personal pickup. Um, but I'm confident that there's always something in the games that, you know, even if you just pick up a game and part it out, they wanted $3 for this. Like I say, uh, it's a personal pickup. I would like to play this game. So I, I got that. And then, oh my gosh, look at this vintage 1972 Mickey Mouse puzzle. Um, how are the aisles this bare? How? What is the point of purpose of even having the thrift store open if the aisles are going to be this bare? You know that they're fully stocked back there in the back. I think this uh, block wanted to be like a knockoff version of an eye home or something. I didn't end up getting this, but I'm going to find something to get in this aisle. Um, this thing looks too dirty. I'm not really interested in grabbing it, but there's got to be something. Look at this bread maker. Okay. This is stainless steel. This is Kenmore brand. Um, they wanted $9, I think, for it. I found some Stuart Weitzman shoes. They just brought out a new cart. I can't even believe my luck. This is what I came in for with shoes. These are Stuart Weitzman and these are also. And then look, guess what else was on the, well, these were only $4. I wanted to show you that. But guess what else was on the cart? A pair of Merrells. These are $4, you guys. Like not to ruin the haul that's coming at the end of this video, but I just had to stop and show you guys this stuff in my cart. Let's go back over here and check out this printer for only $9. Um, so another piece of advice, if you're not finding a lot of luck 
in the areas that you typically source in in thrift stores, go to the areas you don't typically source in. Look at this. Vintage linens always sell well. That first piece that I looked at was only $5. This vintage crib set would sell well. Um, I am rich on inventory right now, so I'm not picking up a lot of these things that I know would sell well. What turned out, or what started out rather, as an almost empty thrift store is turning into a trip where I can pick and choose what profits I want to take home with me. Um, there are a lot of linens. This was the area of the store that was um, plentiful. The quality of this piece caught my attention. There's almost always a tag somewhere on a pillowcase. I'm bound to determine to find it here with one hand. You guys don't laugh at me. We will be successful. And when we are, is it ever going to pay off? Because bam, these are Pottery Barn. These are totally going home with and those were only $3. So my cart is looking incredibly full at this point. I mean, incredibly full. Look at this. This is not an, as empty of a thrift store as we thought. I checked out the toys again, and this is metal on the top. I clanked on that to see. This wasn't quite as old as, you know, you might think. It had a lot of plastic components. I think this ended up being from early 2000s or late 90s. Uh, it wasn't worth what they were asking for resale. Uh, neither was the little Darth Vader car. But would you just look at my cart? Would you just look? Okay guys, it is haul time. I'm gonna show you all the things that I picked up. Um, I am really shocked that I was able to find so many really cool, good quality items there because, I mean, as I said in the beginning of the video, I was walking in looking for shoes and when I saw the shoe racks almost completely bare, I, I could have just left then. I could have been like, there's nothing for me here and just walked away and I would have missed out on I don't know. There's at least a thousand dollars worth of inventory here. I spent a hundred and fourteen dollars, I believe, was my total. Um, and just look at some of the cool stuff I have found. So, I found these pair of Merrells. Um, I think that Merrells is a brand that this particular Goodwill I was at is not aware of yet. I did a bin test on these, and Marcus Dixon Pickens had pointed out that a pair of Merrells I bought recently were coming apart on the sides. Funny enough, I actually thrifted those in his hometown and he had donated them because they were broken. So I didn't want the same thing to happen here. So I did a, a good flex test on these to make sure that they were in good condition. And you guys, I picked these up for $4 for a pair of Merrells. Um, these were on a new cart that they brought out. I got this Rubik's race game. I actually bought this as a date night um, activity for me and my husband. He and I both enjoy solving Rubik's Cube and we even got down to like racing each other once upon a time. And so I thought that that would be a fun game for us. So that's not for resale. Let me just throw everything everywhere real quick. <laughs> this is for resale. Look at this puzzle. Oh my gosh, this is from, I think, when I looked up comps 1972, and it was going for between $32 and $39. Um, this is beautiful, and I think the closer we get to Christmas, an item like this, I mean, if you can't tell, this is huge. Uh, this could be even more valuable. There's not many of these listed. It just says Mickey Mouse on the back, and it, it talks about the creation of Mickey Mouse and all of the history. And then the puzzle pieces inside are so beautiful. The thing I loved most about this find is that Goodwill did not tape the seams of this. And I don't know how we got away with them not taping the seams, but look at these beautiful old vintage puzzle pieces. Like literally everything vintage just makes my heart sing. So I will either count these pieces or maybe even put the puzzle together just to ensure that everything is in good working order. If I'm gonna ask $40 for a puzzle, I really don't want the buyer to be able to say, hey, all the pieces aren't there and me with uncertainty refund them. So again, I will either count the puzzle pieces or maybe put the puzzle together. This one says it, it just says more than 500 pieces. It doesn't even say how many. Oh my gosh, I literally have to put the puzzle puzzle together. Okay. It says this puzzle is 20 and one quarter inch by 20 and one quarter inch, more than 500 pieces. Look at this. It just says more than 500 pieces here on the box. That's okay. Disney just, you know, we're just going to roundabout guess. There's uh, more than 500 pieces there. Um, all right, here is the other Merrill shoe and these are a trail shoe i forgot to tell you guys that anytime that you see like a really aggressive tread on the back or on the bottom and then it says vibram sole that's something that you want to include in the keywords and in the title as well look at these little shoes not a highly desirable size don't get me wrong these are a six and a half double a but let me show you the brand Here's a brand to look for, Stuart Weitzman. So these are a vintage Stuart Weitzman, which is not gonna sell 
quite as high as modern day Stuart Weissman shoes, but I bet you in this really, really great condition, I mean, these are beautiful. Um, and you know, around Christmas time, who doesn't need a green pair of shoes like this? The thing is, these are just so incredibly narrow. I can't fit my foot in here sideways. I paid $4 for a pair of Stuart Weitzman though. I will market these probably at $39.99 and um, aim at 10 times my money um, as, the, as the gross. Uh, the item that caused so much trouble. So that was super embarrassing when I dropped to the pot. Like if you guys, I know you heard because it's in the video, but if you could have really heard the noise that this thing made. So I found this, um, I saw it sitting on the shelf. I saw this little copper bottom, which caused me to want to turn it over, see if it was Revere wear. But this is the egg poacher. So this metal insert comes out, you put water under there, you put your eggs in here and it poaches them to perfection. This is kind of a sought after um, Paul Revere Revere wear piece. This was $3. Um, so yeah, I will uh, I will list this and I've never had Revere wear last too terribly long in my store, every piece that I list goes fairly well and I think the cheapest I ever sold a piece was about $30 so that one was $3 it has all of the inserts it's in very nice condition um that one seemed like a no-brainer these you guys saw me pick these up the pottery barn pillow shams uh, let me see if I can show you the texture and the quality of these this is Okay, so this is what drew me to these. You, you just have to get familiar with quality. People tell me all the time that they would like to do reselling, but they don't know brands. Get used to and familiar with quality. That way, like, the quality is what draws you to the item, not looking at the tags. And then when you see the tag and see the brand, that will cause you to look it up over on eBay. Get familiar with quality. That's what's important. But these are like um, huge square pillow shams. I was hoping they wanted $3 for the pair, but they actually wanted $3 a piece for these. It's still... Um, what's well, kind of a no-brainer for me because Pottery Barn does not last very long and these are in really good condition. I'll probably get about $35 for the pair, which is not 10 times my money, but seems like a solid investment. These don't take up a lot of space either. How adorable is this little Santa stocking? This is like, um, the keywords I'll use here will be quilted, um, I don't know that it's handmade. I don't know that I'll say handmade on this, but I'll use lace. Um, they they only wanted 50 cents for this. It had a yard sale tag of $4 on it, but this was only 50 cents. Um, I'm sure, I'm confident I'll get at least 15 bucks for this. Um, it's incredibly lightweight, easy to ship, takes up no space. I found and have to li get listed today, another little cornucopia basket. If you don't follow me on Instagram, you might not know that I recently sold three of these that were really, really huge. I picked them up for $3 a piece and they all sold for $30 plus shipping. I turned, let's see, $3 a piece is what I paid. So $9 into over $120 gr uh, gross sales. And they weren't really that difficult to ship. Just put them in a large enough box. This one is a tiny one in comparison to the ones I had. The ones I had were like anywhere from 14 to 20 inches long. They varied in size, the three of them. They sold I'm talking all three of them within days of listing them. So this um, keywords would be cornucopia, horn of plenty, Thanksgiving, basket, wicker. Um, yeah, this thing will, in this size, I don't know, I'm probably looking at more like maybe 15 to $18. I'll look up comps, but this is quite a bit smaller than the other ones I found. But I found it for only, um, only, what did I pay? A dollar. That's what I paid for <laughs> and I found it for only a dollar. Look at this beautiful basket. Okay, I'll show you at a distance here what it looks like because you have to be able, let me duck out of the shot here. You have to see this handle. Oh my gosh. This is a wooden carved handle you guys and it has, um, I will use Saint Nicholas and Santa both. Look how beautiful this is. I am not, I don't even know what the comps are on a basket like this, but after I did so well in the Horn of Plenty Cornucopia baskets, I thought this was definitely worth paying $2 for. I will probably aim at at least 30 bucks out of this basket and I will list it over on Poshmark as well. This is so beautiful, you guys. Um, with wicker, uh, any wooden items, 
you might give it a little sniff test while you're in the store because wood does absorb any odors. If this was in a smoking home, then um, it would be incredibly difficult to get the smell out. So smell baskets before you buy them. Or we should just do a whole video on, I know Kevin, Commonwealth Picker has a video out, you might be a reseller if, and like we should do a whole video on how to spot resellers in the thrift store. <laughs> smelling the shoes, or okay, that might be how to spot weirdos too. Um, smelling baskets, <laughs> um, obviously being on the phone. Comment below and tell me like the number one way you feel like you could spot a reseller in the thrift store because I know we give ourselves away. We probably give ourselves away more to each other though. Um, wearing a GoPro, that would be a way to give yourself away. Um, yeah, I don't know. Uh, oh, the, the one with 12 different sizes of shoes or pants in their cart. <laughs> and we always use the excuse, well gosh, at these prices you can just buy for everyone. Do you use that excuse? I totally say that. I got this and I'm not sure yet if it's gonna be for my son. I thought maybe using it even as a stocking stuff or a Christmas gift. The little finger lane things that like you put your finger in here, these little pets live on your finger. The only ones I've ever found are super, super girly and I never saw the dinosaurs before. So he is new and packaged, but he's obviously open box and without his box. He was only $2 though and these sell between $15 and $20. So I'm not sure. If I think that my son would truly enjoy it, I will go ahead and give it to him. But here's the thing. Sometimes we find inexpensive things and we want to either keep them or gift them to someone in our family and it might not be exactly what they would want. So if I didn't give this to him, I could sell it for let's say $15 minus my cost of goods, so on and so forth. I could take the $10 and apply it towards a gift that he might actually enjoy. So don't, um, like I just, I have to pump the brakes sometimes because I want to keep so much stuff that we edge on hoarding and I definitely don't want to hoard. So. If I would buy it for $15, I should keep it. Otherwise, I should sell it, right? I bought two things though that we will be keeping. These are the Harry Potter DVDs. Um, my son, my oldest son and I are working our way through all of the Harry Potters. He's seen most of them, but I have not. And so I've now seen one, two, and three. It's a really super awesome way, I feel like, to connect with him. They're very long movies, so we get a lot of time together. And so I need four, five, six, what is there, like eight of them? <laughs> I need all of those. So I bought Harry Potter and the Deathly Hallows Part Two for $2 and Harry Potter and the Order of the Phoenix also for $2. So those are for our personal collection and it's about like that Rubik's game. That's, I can't even buy it or rent it off of YouTube for that cheap, which is how we typically watch them. So $2 and now we own it. Okay, you saw me pick this up in the video. Guys, $3. This is my very first time ever picking up Magnolite. And I know about Magnolite. I know a lot of people talk about it, but I know about it because of Tim Osborne to thrift. Um, shout out Tim. I picked this Magnolite skillet up. And what I love most about this is it says eight inches on the bottom. You know exactly which skillet it is that you have. And then this one was also Oh, okay, this one was $6. I was thinking for some reason this one was three also, but this one was $6. This one says Magnolite Professional 10 inch uh, USA, has an 800 number stamped on the bottom. Like I'm very optimistic about these comps, but I need your advice. Do I lot these up together since they're both Magnolite and both about the same series, but this one's a professional and this one's not. And I feel like maybe I could get more money if I separate them. But if you've ever had any experience selling um, vintage pots and pans, would you tell me below if you would lot these up and sell them um, two for one price or should I sell them separately? How about this ink? I never pick up ink. Um, I leave it more often than I even look it up, but something told me to look this one up and I'll tell you what it was. I say something told me. The fact that that aisle was dang near empty and I you know, was trying so hard, almost for the sake of the video, but I was trying so hard to prove a point that there's always profits in the thrift store even when the shelves are empty. So I looked this up and to see that it was going between 20 and $30, they only wanted $1 for it. This is the Epson 2. Eight, eight. And on the bottom here, there's an expiration date. That's something important to look for when you're sourcing ink. Expired ink does sell, but you need to be careful trying to sell it and make sure that the buyer understands that it's expired. I would personally even go to the length 
of putting expired in the title, um, in the description, you know, put the date, put photos of the date, and just ensure that the buyer truly knows so that you don't get a return based off of the item not as described. This one says 6 2023. So I am good for two more years on this that I can sit on my shelf if it really needs to. And that has all three colors in it. So big win. Okay, so when I walked in and saw the shoe shelves were bare, the very first item that I picked up just caused me to start looking at everything because it was clear it was an item that so many people had walked right by. It was a little strange looking. <laughs> These shoes. Tell me, would you have looked twice at these shoes? Would you have been interested in them? Um, so it's like a clog style with a zipper here, but what is with this spring? Let me tell you what the brand is here. Z Coil. And guys, the comps on this are really good. Let's see how much I paid for these. I think it was four. Four dollars. Like my Goodwill shoe prices this day were really, really outstanding. And speaking of low shoe prices. I found a second pair of Stuart Weitzman heels and look at these. They have studs on the back. These are vintage as well. They're very avant-garde and before their time. Look at the back detail here. These are beautiful. If they had a snowball's chance of fitting me, I would try them on, but these are even more narrow. These are a six and a half 4A. So when you are um, thrifting really high quality shoes, you can see the writing in there. When you're thrifting really high quality shoes, especially vintage, um, it's not enough to write that these are a size six and a half. If you see A, M, uh, B, um, there are various letters and more often than not, those letters go along with the size of the shoe. The fact that this is an A would have made it narrow. A double A, a triple A, it gets more narrow, but these are a 4A. I can't just sell these as a size six and a half. And another um, thing of note on here is these say Stuart Weitzman for Mr. Seymour, which is a brand that I am familiar with and I have sold lots of vintage bags. Um, they carry about the same value as the other Stuart Weitzman vintage ones. so. Paid $4 for these and hoping to sell them for, um, yeah, probably about, considering the studs on those, I might aim for more like $39 to $45. I brought these home and told my husband that I bought them for him because, you know, of course we need hard disk, right? <laughs> I'm just kidding. These were only $2 and they sell for uh, at least $20. So again, it was out of desperation to find something in that aisle, but you know what? It's 10 times my money again. You can't get 10 times your money on most things that you would invest in and reselling old vintage things like that is just so cool to me. Okay, let's go through the big items that I bought. This printer, I walked right by the first time, but then I saw it is wireless. So I ran comps on this for $9. It is in good working condition. I plugged this up and it looks like they can sell for around 50 bucks. So it's lightweight enough. I know it's gonna take up a lot of space. I'm not sure if I should have picked this one up for $9 or not, but that's just crazy. When the selection's so good that you don't know, should I only make four or five times my money? Money, then you know, first of all, it, the shelves aren't as dry as you thought and you're in the right line of work. <laughs> this one though, I was leaving, I was headed to the door and they brought out another car and I walk over and this thing is sitting there for 20 bucks. This can go for like $150. It is a beast, it is so heavy, it is wireless, it'll print two-sided, and it's awesome. Uh, shout out again to Tim, because this one is one where um, just the letter tray is worth money, just the screen is worth money, so I'm not sure. Comment and let me know, should I sell this as one big old monster piece for 150 bucks, or should I part it out? It's the HP Office Jet Pro 8500A. So yeah, this one is big. And that envelope is all of the original paperwork. So $20 is a big spend for me. But you know, Drew Profit Monsters was saying the other day that he's graduated a lot in his business that he's no longer afraid of spending 10 or $15 on something where he used to be, you know, like, dirt cheap sourcing and i feel that a thousand percent i used to always you know if it wasn't if it was over five dollars i'm not buying it and that's probably 
a pretty good practice to be in for your first, I don't know, several months to a year of reselling because this is a gamble. This is $20 and $20 you might not have to invest in your business at the very, very start. So if you are a new reseller, do not feel like you need to be buying stuff like this. Um, but I'm gonna show you one more large appliance that was $9. This bread maker, I thought this was beautiful because it is Kenmore, which is an outstanding brand. It is stainless, I plugged it up, she works. And I opened it up to see if the pan is in there. I thought worst case scenario, I can Kevin Commonwealth picker this. Shout out again, Kevin. And I can sell just the parts and pieces, but this is $9. Again, sells for $50 plus shipping. Bread maker in the winter time, this one seemed like a no brainer. So um, let me know again, as well as with the printer, would you sell this complete or would you part out just the paddle cells, just the basket cells. You know, I don't know what other parts I could take off of this, but trust me, there are parts and pieces that people are looking for. Finally, the piece de resistance, these belts, you guys, they brought these out on a new rack and these were $2 a piece. I'm gonna show you the buckles here first because they are just phenomenal. And then if I zoom out here, you can see like this red one has medallions here. And oh my gosh, this is just, this gold and tan one. The only bad thing about these is that they won't fit me. I'm so sad that they won't fit me. But I told um, a friend of mine, Jessie Shops, shout out Jessie, that I will be sending her one of these belts to thank her for that magnificent earring haul that she sent me yesterday. So these belts, guys, they had, let me just prove this to you, every single one of these for two dollars how incredible is that so um at two dollars i knew i needed to pick them up i have sold enough vintage belts to know that even plain vintage belts you can sell for at least 20 bucks so the 10 times my money was there but guys these belts these very detailed carlisle is the brand belts can sell for $50 a piece. Um, that is if they are in really good condition, if they are super, super cool. These are both. I love these belts. Will you just look at this one? Look, I will use Paisley, probably gold Paisley. I will use retro, 80s, color block. These are all the keywords that I will be plugging in here for $2 a piece, you guys. They're a size medium. I would imagine these are gonna work best for a size six, eight. Um, and yeah, I'm just a little sad that they won't quite fit me. These are so, so pretty. Um, so yeah, if you're interested in these, let me know, um, I have 14 of them to sell. So let's do the math real quick. 14 of them, if I sell them for $50 a piece. Okay, so I bought 14 belts at $2 a piece. I have a $28 buy cost. If I sell those same 14 belts for $50 each, that's $700. I will have the buyers pay the shipping, but there will be eBay fees of about 13% on those, which will leave me with over $600. Um, we'll deduct my original $28 buy-in cost, and I'm still comfortably sitting at over $500 profit for this $28 pickup of these vintage belts. Is this something that you would have walked right by? Because I feel like a lot of people would, especially if you're not solely into vintage fashion, but it just goes to show you that just because you're not into an item doesn't mean that there's not a stellar market for it. Let me show you this beige one here. This is so cool while I do this with one hand. Look at this, oh my gosh. It's dangerous that this, you know, almost fit. <laughs> I'm glad that they don't, but yeah. So this one is actually genuine snakeskin leather and Carlisle made in the USA. But again, many of these, I think this one included, um, are made in Italy. This one is genuine snakeskin as well. Um, I just think these are incredible. Seems like a good place to leave the video in the floor sitting with the spoils um, among all these fantastic vintage belts. So if you like this video, definitely like this video. Consider subscribing because I would love, love to have you as a member of this channel. And um, I just appreciate you guys so much. I told my son the other day, if I didn't have my subscribers, I wouldn't have a channel. You are the reason for this channel and the reason that I put out a wealth of content. So thank you so, so much. Um, God bless you guys. If you watch to the end of the video, 
comment a loaf of bread uh, in homage to the bread maker that I found because I think that's a pretty good pickup. And don't forget to give me your advice on whether or not you would lot up the pots, the skillets that I found, and then if you would part out the printer and the bread maker because I really need your help on those. Um, I need your advice. So thanks guys. God bless you so much. I hope that your week is fantastic. I'll see you Friday on my live at eight o'clock central time right here on this channel. And don't forget, treat your business like your business. Alrighty. Yeah.